Hello and welcome to Intro to Mass Media, CMST 126. My name is Rob McKenzie, Dr. Rob McKenzie if you prefer, and I'm the Department Chair of Communication, and I'll be teaching this class for the next three weeks. And I don't know what time you're watching this video, it could be in the morning, could be in the afternoon, could be at night, but I'd like you to think about your last few hours and think about the media that you've come in contact with. Have you come across a television in a bar, for example, or in a doctor's office, or a gym, or maybe in your own home? Maybe not. Students really aren't watching TV today. Well, they're watching streaming TV, but they're not watching traditional broadcast TV. But have you seen TV in the last few, few hours? How about radio? Did you hop in your car and did you listen to something that you have on your iPhone? Or did you decide to scan the FM band? Did you have a, a station that you already have locked in? Did you pull up at a gas station and get out and there was a radio station playing there? Did you go up to a grocery store and you heard somebody playing the radio out of their window? Did you have any contact with radio in the last hour? How about the internet? For sure, right? For sure, you've been on your phone many times today. Maybe more times than not being on your phone. Think about that. And I'm sure that you've been looking at stuff that involves accessing the internet, which also brings into play social media. I'm sure you've been on social media unless you're one of those really rare people today who's decidedly not belonging to Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. You're, you've opted out. Most people are not that way. You're on one of those platforms, maybe more, and you're looking at social media all the time. Maybe even you've stopped this video already and looked at social media on your phone or not even stopped the video. So the internet has kind of a permanent presence throughout our day because of our phone. And of course we access it on our laptops as well. And then we have a really old medium, the newspaper. Have you come into contact with a newspaper? Are you living at home and your parents get a newspaper? Do you buy a newspaper because you like to read the box scores for baseball teams? Did you see a newspaper headline as you checked out of Wawa or CVS or wherever? Newspapers really fading in the background but still have a very important structural role in what I am now describing as a landscape of media. I'm trying to get across to you that every single day you are besieged, if I can use that word, besieged by media. You can't get away from media. I'm going to ask you, when was the last time that you went without any of these things for 24 hours? Probably you can't remember when the last time you went without media, unless you were camping, or really, really sick in bed, or out of cell phone range, and you're just, yeah, you got nothing, right? Feel strange in today's day and age. So here we are. We're going to study mass media. We're going to study media as they are communicated across masses of people. And we're going to develop a definition for that so you know what makes mass media different from other communication media. But that's the way that we're starting the course. And what I would like to do in the rest of this video is introduce the course to you by way of the syllabus. I'd like you to have your syllabus handy. It's on D2L under the content tab. And we'll take it from the top. My name is Rob McKenzie. I have a PhD from Penn State University. I got my master's degree from there as well. I also have an undergraduate degree which is in history and that's from Millersville University but I really started to focus my studies on media and in particularly broadcasting that's my strong suit I happen to be the advisor to WESS radio which is a 24-hour broadcaster here at East Stroudsburg University and that's because most of my background before I became department chair was in broadcasting and that includes my publication background as well so you'll see next that we have two readings for the class if you don't have the readings today you are already in trouble I sent out an email two weeks ago letting you know you've got to have the readings to pass this class, and it starts the very first day. You cannot be ordering readings the first day of class and waiting for them to come five or six days. So hopefully you can get a hold of the, the reading today. I can tell you that the, the first one I'm going to mention, Rounding Some Corners, it's a book that I've written. It's a book of newspaper columns. I, I'm reluctant to use the word newspaper because it really is not, not very newspaper-like, but I publish the original columns in a newspaper and then turn them into a book, and they make oddball observations of the ironies in life. And many of the observations are about media because that's my background. So you'll be taking those columns in this class, you'll be reading them, and you'll be posting about them using your own ideas. More about that later, but that book, Rounding Some Corners, if you don't have it right now in your hot little hands, there is a copy at Kemp Library. I don't know how far away you're living from that. You can get it at Kemp Library. Otherwise, you better find a way to get it real quick. The other book is called Mass Communication, Living in a Media World. This is it here. It's by Ralph Hansen. This is what the cover looks like, 7th edition. You may be asking yourself, gee, can I get by with a 6th edition? It was a lot cheaper. 
my answer to you is, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't because every day of class, I'm going to be pulling 10 questions from both the chapter in, in edition 7 and also some stuff that I'm going to add in my own lectures. And that's going to be the basis of your 10 quiz questions. So will there be an average of one or two questions on every quiz that is not in edition 6 but is in edition 7? Probably. Yeah, that's your calculation. Edition 7, that's the one that's assigned for the class. And it's a good book. I really like the way it's written. I like the way that it's evolved over the years. And you're going to have to have it. you got to start reading it today because we got a quiz you have until 1 o'clock tomorrow. You actually have 24 hours to get your book if you don't have it yet. And that's when that first quiz has to be taken by. More about that in a few minutes. Okay, moving on now on the syllabus. We're looking at department outcomes here. And I'm going to go through them, but I'm not going to go through the course outcomes, which are next on the syllabus. They're way too long for a video. But as far as what I want you to get out of this specific course, number one, I want you to, to demonstrate that you get average oral, visual, relational, and presentational skills. I'm sorry. Those are, those are department outcomes, not specifically for the course. They're for outcomes if you take any course in the department. We want you to have above average oral, visual, relational, and presentational skills. We also want you to have above average critical thinking skills. We also want you to have above average research literacy skills, the ability to go find information. We also want you to have above average participation in being an active citizen at the local, state, national, and, lo and global levels. And finally, in all of our courses in communication, we want you to be able to demonstrate that you have an above average ability to interpret visual communication. We'll be doing a lot of that in this class. All right, now let's move on to some of the specifics of the class itself so that we know how it's going to function. This is a distance ed class, also known as an online class, it takes place completely online. And as I've already mentioned, you have every day from one o'clock until one o'clock the next day to complete your assignments. And that's by design, that's so that you have some flexibility if you're working in a job or if you're a late riser in the morning or if you're an early riser, you can complete the course when you want. It's all going to take place on D2L. You've got to make sure that you have that technological connection. I do not accept, do not accept late assignments in this course. I do not accept any assignments sent to me on email. I've got 70 students that I'm teaching right now. If you send me an email, oh, Dr. McKenzie, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't post my RSC post and I, on D2L, so I want to send it to you on email. No, it gets buried in my email, and then I have to go back and look for it. So I'm only accepting everything through D2L. you got to be on time. Make sure your technology is there. Make sure you have a plan B, You know, even turning your assignment through your phone if you don't have an internet connection. All right, next up is the instructor video part of the course, like you're seeing right now. I'm going to have one of these every single day for you, available about by 1 o'clock, and they're going to set up the framework for understanding the chapter. I'm not going to cover the chapter as I would if I was teaching this class live at ESU on campus because it's a video format. So you have to make use of the, of the medium and its limitations as well as what it can excel at. And so my videos are going to be short. They're going to be around the 15-minute range, 15, 20-minute range for each class. And then after you watch the video, you can stop it and start it, of course. Also, then you're going to read the chapter in the book. In this case, we have chapter one today, Living in a Media World. Or you can read the chapter before you watch the video. It's up to you. Or you can do both and read them over again, take notes or whatever. And then there's going to be the quiz. So after you watch the video, after you read the chapter, then you'll have a quiz. And the quiz is going to be 10 minutes exactly. It's timed 10 minutes exactly, and it's got 10 multiple choice questions. And each question is going to be worth 0.5 points. So that means each quiz altogether with 10 questions is going to be worth 5 points total because each question is worth just half a point. So you'll have plenty of time to do it if you've read the material. You can have the book open in front of you, but really that's with 10 minutes. That's not going to be the most efficient use of your time. The best way you can score well on these quizzes, listen Listen to the instructor video, take notes, and take notes and read the book thoroughly. you got to read. A book is a medium. It's a medium that we're going to be studying in this class, a very important medium. We'll talk about why that is, even though it's so hard for people to want to read today, understandably so. We're not trained to do that in the way that we are spending our time looking at our phones, but we'll see later on why the book is so important for your thought process. Okay, so we've got a bunch of quizzes. Actually, we have uh, 15 multiple-choice quizzes, and... Uh, yeah, so you'll have uh, the majority of your grade in the class is going to come from those quizzes. I'll tell you the grade weights of those in a few minutes. Then you have another assignment each and every day as well. It's called Rounding Some Corners Posts. 
That's my book, Rounding Some Corners. I also call it RSC. And you're going to be making two posts every day under the discussions tab. You're going to be making them in the same place, like not two separate posts, like one here and one down there, but two separate posts on two separate columns. And here's what you're going to do. It's here for you on the syllabus. Each post is 190 to 210 words. That's your window. I want you to count your words. Do it in Microsoft Word so you have exactly the same number of words. If you go over, I'm not going to accept it. You go under, I'm not going to accept it. 190 to 210 words. In each post, in one sentence, what I want you to do is summarize what the column is about. And then secondly, extend off of the column with your own ideas. Your ideas, not mine, your ideas. And then third, relate the topic of the column in some way to material in the chapter that we are reading for that particular day. That's all you have to do. All of this stuff is on your syllabus. It's also going to be on D2L those guidelines that I just said. So you've got until one o'clock every day to post your RSC, your two RSC posts. All right, now on to the grade weight so you can kind of mathematically process where your your efforts are gonna, what your efforts are gonna result in when you're trying to figure out your grade. So 70 points for the class or almost two thirds of the class, 70 out of 100 points are from the 15 quizzes that we have in this class. So we've got 15 quizzes at five points each, and then I will drop the one lowest score. The one lowest quiz score, you get to drop one, so that's gonna be 14 quizzes times 0.5 points, and that's 70 points for the class. Then the remaining 30 points, 30 out of 100, is your RSC post, and the beauty of this assignment is I'm not grading them. All you have to do is post them to get the credit. Each, po each post is worth 0.5 point, point, points. If you make the post, it follows the guidelines. I'm not grading you saying this is a 4 point, uh, 0.45. I'm not grading this at 0.35. No, you get the full five. So you are in charge of your own destiny. You start missing these posts, you're screwing yourself. You are throwing away points that you can't get back. Don't come back later and say, oh, uh, Dr. McKenzie, I forgot to make the, the post on this day. Can I make it? No, got to make them each and every day, just like the other students in the class are dil diligently doing that. All right, let's move on now to original work. I have a statement in here. All work in this class must be submitted as your own work. Do not cut, lift, do not cut and paste or lift passages. Grab stuff from Wikipedia and slap it on there as your RSC post. It's really hard to do that in that assignment. Anyhow, it's, I mean, I can tell when it's not your thinking, but I have to have that statement on here. Also, late work. Know what late work will be accepted for this class. I got 70 students. They're both online classes. I got emails and posts coming at me all day long. I have to really stay up on this. Can't accept late work. It's And above all else, it's just not fair to the students who actually make it on time despite their life circumstances. They make it happen. Those are the students I'm thinking of when I have this policy. All right, I do have an email policy. You can email me anytime with a question. Please tell me what class you're in. I have two classes, remember. If you're referring to a specific post, please make sure you number it or give me a date. Make it as easy for me to reference that information as possible. But most importantly, when you email me, please use etiquette. Please use etiquette in terms of using a salutation. Hello, dear doctor, hi, professor. Any of those, don't just start off with when is the RSC post due? That's not the way that we communicate an email. Email has a dignity to it that texting doesn't necessarily have. It's all part of what my job is as an instructor to help get across certain forms of content that are appropriate for certain forms of media. And emailing has a formality to it that you have to make sure that you learn. All right, and then on the last uh, the last item on this second page of the syllabus is the Title, title IX statement. And you can read that on your own. That's basically all about protecting you against sexual and other kinds of harassment and identifying the rights that you have and the procedures should you encounter such circumstances. All right, now we turn to the last page of the syllabus, which is the schedule of events. You can see it's all laid out there for you. It's pretty simple. Next three weeks are all laid out for you. So today we have a little bit more to do because it's the first day of class. But, I've, and I've sent out an email specifying exactly what your tasks are. But you can see as we go through this, we've got chapters 1 through 15, and every day it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be instructor video, it's going to be read the chapter, it's going to be take the quiz, and it's going to be make your RSC posts. And that right there is your pathway for the rest of Intro to Mass Media. Welcome to the course.